The next test is going to be the integral test. In order for us to use the integral test, though, we have to know about improper integrals. Now, improper integrals are very straightforward, so we're just going to go over them real quick right now. We could have done this earlier in the semester, but I knew we would be hitting it here, and you would never see it again until this part of the semester, so I think it's best just to look at it now. So what is an improper integral? Well, we're going to let f of x be continuous over an interval of the form a all the way up to positive infinity. Then the improper integral is going to be the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx. And how do you evaluate this? You take the limit as t goes to positive infinity of the integral from a to t of f of x dx, provided the limit exists. Now, this you use, you use form number one. If you have an integral symbol, I'm sorry, if you have infinity up above. Then, if you have negative infinity, it's just the same exact thing. It's just you're setting it up a little bit differently, okay? And in each case, if the limit exists, then the improper integral is said to converge. If the limit does not exist, then the improper integral is said to diverge. But there is a third form that we need to be concerned with. And that's this one right here. So if we have the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, what we can do is we can break this up. Now, in general, we're going to break it up from negative infinity to zero plus the integral from zero to infinity, provided both of these integrals, so provided both of these converge. If either one or both of the two integrals diverge, then the entire integral itself diverges. All right, so you can see why we didn't really look at this at the beginning of the semester and we're really focusing in on it now. It's because it uses these words converge and diverge all over the place. So I just figured we'll just do it right now. So let's look at some examples on just how do we actually calculate an improper integral. All right, because I think that's really important. So let's say we wanted to find the area. For f of x equals 1 over x and the x-axis over the interval one to infinity. Okay? So visually, here's what's happening. 1 over x looks like this, okay? In fact, technically, looks like this. You got this other side. But we're only concerned with the interval from positive 1 to infinity. So we want all of this area underneath here. And you got to remember, this is going to infinity. There's not like a hard stopping point, like from the integral from a to b, all right? So what we can see here is our area is going to be the integral from 1 to infinity, of 1 over x dx. Now, this is form 1. So let's go ahead and let's apply the improper integral as a limit. So we're going to get the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral 1 to t of 1 over x dx. Now from here, we go ahead and integrate. We get the limit as t goes to infinity of the ln of x evaluated in between 1 and t. So we have the limit as t goes to infinity of the ln of t minus the ln of 1. We know the ln of 1 goes to 0. So the only thing we're really evaluating here is the limit of as t goes infinity of the ln of t. And that goes to infinity. So this improper integral here, we would say diverges. All right? 
Let's try another one here. Let's evaluate. This integral. Now this one, we're going to need a table, but I'm just going to tell you what it is because I'm not concerned with, can you find the integral? I'm concerned with, do you understand how to use improper integrals here? So the first thing we're going to do, all right, is we're going to rewrite this. This is going to be form two. So we're going to rewrite it as the limit. Oops, sorry. It's going to be the limit. As t goes to infinity, I'm sorry, t goes to negative infinity in this one, of the integral from t to 0 of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. Now, the integral of that, like I said, you're going to need a table for that, but I'm going to help you. That's just going to be 1 half inverse tangent of x over 2 evaluated in between 0 and t. So you would actually look this up in our integral table. So from here, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to evaluate. So I'm going to pull the 1 half out front. We got the limit as t goes to negative infinity of the inverse tangent of 0 minus the inverse tangent of t over 2 and this turns out to be pi over 4 so this converges to pi over 4 so the last example I'm going to do here all right once again we're going to evaluate and in this case, we're going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this would be that third form. All right. So when we go to evaluate this, notice that the limits of integration are negative infinity to positive infinity. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by splitting up the integral. So let me just go ahead and rewrite it. Now we're going to apply form three. We're going to split it up. So we're going to go from negative infinity to zero of x e to the x dx plus the integral from zero to positive infinity x e to the x dx. Now, you got to remember, if either of these diverges, so if either diverges, then they both diverge, all right? If one of them converges, then you hope the other one does as well. But if, it, but at least one, if at least one diverges, game over, okay? So let's go ahead, let's evaluate this here. So let's do the first integral. I'll write it in red. Negative infinity to zero, x e to the x dx. That's gonna be the limit as t goes to negative infinity of the integral from t to 0, x e to the x dx. When we integrate that, we're going to have to use uh, integration by parts. So we end up getting the limit as t goes to negative infinity of x e to the x minus e to the x. Evaluate this between 0 and t. So you get the limit as t goes to negative infinity of negative 1 minus t e to the t plus e to the t. And when you substitute in your limit, you end up getting negative 1. Now, in blue, we'll do the other side.
So we get the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the x dx equals the limit as t goes to infinity of 0 to t x e to the x dx. Now, once again, we already did the integral previously, so we're going to do it again. So we get the limit as t goes to infinity of x e to the x minus e to the x evaluated this time in between 0 and t. So we're going to evaluate. We get, oops, sorry. We get the limit as t goes to infinity of t e to the t minus e to the t plus 1. And that's going to give us positive infinity. So since the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the x dx diverges, this means that the integral, the entire integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of x e to the x diverges also. So that's going to be it for this little review of improper integrals. We're going to take this and apply it to the integral test.